Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. We often think of sharks as creatures of the tropics, living in clear, warm waters near coral reefs, or perhaps prowling the shallows near a beach. But sharks live all over the world, in all of the oceans, from the tropics to the Arctic, from the shallows to the deep sea. This is one such animal, the Greenland shark, named after the place where it was first seen. This massive carnivore lives in the coldest water on Earth, the icy depths of the Arctic Ocean. But you don't need to go all the way to the Arctic to see one of these sharks. In recent years, divers have been getting surprise visits by Greenland sharks right here in the St. Lawrence. In the remote Canadian town of Bay Camo in Quebec, Greenland sharks come into shallow water during the summer. They enter a narrow, deep bay where the surface is darkened by tannins from river runoff. The visibility is not very good. I'm going out to see if I can dive with one of these monster sharks in the St. Lawrence. My guide to diving with the Greenland sharks is Sylvain Surois, a local dive instructor and dive boat operator. He's been diving with the Greenland sharks for many years. So Sylvain, um, how do we get the sharks to come over to us underwater? Do we have some bait or some chum or something? We're not going to use some bait. Those sharks are curious. They are predators. They want to know what invade their territory. So they're going to come to see us. Wait a minute. You're telling me that they're just going to come over out of curiosity. Yes, we're stranger in their territory, so they're gonna investigate us, turn around, and go back to their daily routine. Wow, well, this I gotta see. Let's go diving. Let's go diving. Dry suits take diving to another level of complexity. We begin suiting up to dive in the chilly water of the St. Lawrence. I need a dry suit to stay warm because the water rarely goes above 40 degrees. That's cold. I jump into the water, grab my camera, and head towards the bottom. Merci. But something is wrong. The water's not cold. It's nearly 60 degrees. Sylvain starts banging a pair of rocks together. He believes this will attract the sharks because they're curious about the sound. I see a kind of fish called sand lance, but no sharks. So this time, no luck, Jonathan. Nothing. We went down, we sat at about 65, 70 feet for an hour, and we looked all directions into the darkness. And I do mean darkness. <laughs> and we saw nothing. I'm not one to give up easily, so we head out the next day to try again. Well, it's the second day of the trip so far. Four dives, zero sharks. Needless to say, shark diving is not always predictable. I enter the water again with my fingers crossed. We head to the bottom engulfed in near darkness. The bottom's covered in beautiful anemones and a crab scurries away from my lights. Sylvain does his best to attract the sharks clicking his rocks together, but nothing shows up. The water's just too warm. Another dive. 
with no sharks. Normally I'd be thrilled with water that's 20 degrees too warm. I mean, who doesn't love warm water? But these are Arctic sharks. They like really cold water. So if I want to find any sharks, I gotta find some cold water. And that probably means we're gonna have to dive deep. The next day, we move the boat a little further from shore. Down on the bottom, it's so dark, my camera can barely produce an image of Sylvain in the twilight at 110 feet. But good news, the water's cold at this depth. We only wait a few minutes and then, out of the darkness comes a big shape. It's a Greenland shark. I can't believe it. Just like Sylvain said, it's coming over to give me a look. No chum, no bait, just pure curiosity. What an odd looking shark with a big round body and a small mouth filled with rows of tiny razor sharp teeth. Most of my encounters with sharks are in warm, clear water. It's so weird to be swimming with a huge shark like this in cold, murky water. This shark is more than 10 feet long, but it's only a small one. Greenland sharks reach a massive 21 feet, making them among the largest carnivorous sharks in the world. Yet studies suggest they grow extremely slowly, less than an inch a year. So this 10-footer may be 100 years old. And that's nothing. Researchers think the Greenland shark may live to be 200 years old. Even though it's said that these sharks don't see well, this one appears to be watching me, his eye following my every move. The shark stays with me for 15 minutes, swimming slowly and not presenting any threat to me at all. He just seems curious. But soon he picks up the pace and I can no longer keep up. He swims into the gloom and my dive is over because I'm low on air. Sylvain and I head back to the surface. Woo! I've finally seen a Greenland shark! We decided to go a little deeper. 110 feet just so we could get into that colder water. And when we got down there, it was freezing cold and then out of the darkness came the big, huge Greenland shark. It was incredible! On the way back to the dock, I still can't believe what an amazing encounter I just had. Sometimes all the effort is worth it in the end.